All right, for this next example, we're gonna go ahead and do two problems, <clears throat> okay? And so one's gonna be a parabola and one's going to be a line. I'm just gonna go on another piece of paper. Okay, and so we are going to graph the parametric equation. Okay, and what we're gonna do for this one is we are going to solve for t and substitute, and then we're kind of gonna show a table um, and graph it, okay? Um, and I'll kind of explain it as we go as well. So we got x equals negative t plus one, y is equal to negative four t plus three, and t is on this restriction from zero to three. All right, so what you could do if you want is you can go ahead and make a table, all right, and go 0, 1, 2, 3, and then find an x and a y coordinate, plot those, be good, okay? Um, that would work when it's that small of a um, interval, all right? This is only 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, um, but say we're going to do negative 10 to 25, uh, I think most of you would prefer not to do 35, plug it in and plot kind of thing. So the way we're gonna get around that is, see we have a t in both equations. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve for that t. Okay, so I know what I'm gonna do with this, x equals negative t plus one. I'm gonna add a t over and I'm gonna subtract an x. Okay, and so I have t equals negative x plus one. All right, and so that's what t equals, and so guess what, I'm just gonna plug this guy right into there. Because remember, when you guys graph things your entire life, you always had y equals. So we wanna solve for the t and the x, so that way we can plug it in and get a y equals something. So we're gonna get y equals negative four x plus one plus three. Kinda circled over that plus one, oopsie. Okay, all right, and so I just need to go ahead and distribute. So y equals negative 4x minus 4 plus 3. Oh, sorry, this is a negative x. My bad. Okay, so it's positive 4x minus 4 plus 3. All right, and so then y equals 4x, and negative 4 plus 3 just makes a negative 1. And so this parametric equation is really just this line, 4x minus 1. And you guys all know, hopefully, how to graph the line y equals 4x minus 1, okay, right? Because this is just y equals mx plus b, and no one can see that, so I won't use that again. <laughs> y equals mx plus b. All right, this is our y-intercept, 4 is our slope, okay? So I'll go ahead and on my graph, okay, I know I'm starting at the point negative 1, and then I'm gonna go rise up, one, two, three, four, and go over one, okay? And so I am talking about this line right here. Okay, so we're in slope-intercept form, I'm talking about that line. However, this line is on restricted on the interval zero to three. So we still have to do a slight table, okay? But you really only need to do the endpoints. You don't have to do all of the stuff in between. So I'm gonna do a table all right but I'm just gonna do zero and I'm gonna do three Alex will tell you you need to do zero one in the middle and three I think you're more than capable of enough noticing that zero is the starting point and three is the ending point and you can figure out the direction the graph is going between those okay so we're gonna plug in zero into X so if I plug negative zero plus one Okay, so negative zero plus one. Well, that is just equals one. Okay, and then I plug three in, so I get negative three plus one, that equals negative two. Okay, and then for my y's, I'll plug those in as well. Okay, so I have negative four times zero plus three. Well, that's just zero plus three, so three. And negative four times three plus three. Okay, negative four times three is a negative 12 plus three, so that's gonna be a negative nine. So when I'm gonna come to graph this, I'm gonna start at one, three. All right, so that is my first point on my graph, is one, 
and then one, two, three. So it's that point right there, one of the ones we graphed. Okay, so that's my starting point. And then I wanna graph negative two, negative nine. So down negative two and down all the way. I'm gonna approximate negative nine is right here, okay? And so what you would actually graph is just this piece right here. And we started at this and went that way. So my direction is going this way. Okay, and so you want to put in those arrows. So you started at 1, 3, and you move to negative 2, negative 9. All right, so the line, the direction of the graph is going down. Okay, so we're going to do another one. That one was a line. We're going to do one that's an actual parabola. Okay. So I have x equals t squared and y equals negative 3t. Negative 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 3. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and solve for t over here. Um, this one, it actually might be easier to solve for t and y and plug that in. And then you guys can know your parabola equations and go from there. Okay, um, if we solved for t with x, what you would get is t equals plus or minus the square root of x. And you have to go back to your square root uh, from algebra two. Okay, and a square root function remembers this and this. Hopefully that rings the bell. That would be the plus square root of x. This would be the negative square root of x. Okay, or you could just use what we've been studying this whole time, which is conic sections. Okay, and so I'm gonna take this guy and say y over negative three equals t. So I'll plug that in there. And so x is equal to y over negative 3 squared. All right, so we get x equals y squared over 9. It's really x equals 1 ninth y squared. Okay, and so this is that, um, <coughs> that parabola, right? Um, we would usually do, uh, ooh, Sorry, times by 9 here. So I get 9x equals y squared. Okay, and so this is really our y squared equals 4px, or we'd have y minus k squared equals 4px minus h. So that's your parabola equation. Hopefully that's ringing a bell. All right. Um, so here, this is right now our equation. So when y is squared... Okay, what direction does your parabola face? You gotta remember all of that stuff, right? Okay, and so y squared means instead of going up and down, because that's the way our parabolas normally went and x was squared, right? We're gonna be going left or right. And we're gonna tell whether we're going left or right depending on this 4p part, right? The 4p, the stuff in front of the x, okay, tells you what direction it goes. And so nine is going to be a positive, right? So that means positive direction between left and right would mean right. So we have the start of a graph right here. Notice I don't have an h or a k, so my vertex is at 0, 0. Okay, 4p equals 9, so I can find the focus if I really want, uh, but I don't really care. And so if you want to plug in some points, or you can just kind of sketch a graph, this is going to be our parabola. The only thing is, is we are on this interval where t is negative 2 all the way till 3. So we got to do that chart again to figure it out. Okay, and so I'm going to put this right here so we can do that chart. All right, so we need a t, x, and a y. Do negative 2. If you want to do one in between just to help Sometimes it's easier. I think it's a little extra work, but just in case if you need it to see it. Okay, so x is going to be, we're plugging in negative 2, so this is just our negative 2 squared, which will become positive 4. If I plug in 0 squared, it just becomes 0, and 3 squared would become 9. All right, and then we need our y, okay, so this is just negative 3 times a negative 2, which would just come out to a positive 6, okay? Negative 3 times 0 is still 0, 
Okay, and negative three times three is just a negative nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot this point, four, six, okay? So one, two, three, four, we'll say that's six way up there. Okay, then it comes to zero, zero. So we're coming this way, okay? And then we'll go to one, two, three, negative nine, which would be way down here. All right, and it'd go there. Okay, mine is just a sketch, right? On Alex, I'll actually plot those points. Oh, sorry, not three, nine. Nine, negative nine, woo! So way over here, right? They come way out here. Okay, mine's just a sketch, so on Alex, yours would be much more correct. But hopefully you would notice, even if you didn't do the middle term, you started at four, six, so you started at the upper part, and you came around down to a lower part. Okay, and so our graph is going this way. So you put the arrows going that way. All right, so that is a line and a parabola. All we got left is our circles and ellipses.